Ian, safe lock uh, valves and fittings. You manufacture your own parts, but you're also subcontractors as well, correct? That's correct, yeah. And, and what's the split in the business? Um, I'd say 80% is safe lock components. 80% safe lock. We're looking at these star machines today. When, when it comes to these, this capacity, what do these do more of, subcontract or your own product? Uh, it's pretty much a mixed bag, really. You know, you, you take what comes through the door and, and our own orders will fluctuate as well. So. And I want to learn about why the machines are here. Um, you, traditionally, you're, you were a kind of fixed head, twin turret business, uh, still into production, obviously, but you then started to go down the road of the star machines, sliding head machines with non-guide bush facility. What, why was that? We spend a lot of money on uh, good quality machine tools because all we machine is stainless steel. Uh, fixed head machine is quite expensive uh, of the caliber we buy which is twin turret, twin spindle. The sliding head option we found we could buy a machine for less than half the price of one of those and move some of the work that they were doing onto that machine also freeing up capacity on our fixed heads. So. And when you move that work onto the slider how much faster was it to actually produce those parts as well? Because that's a factor too. In some instances, it's 50% faster. Right, so not only have you cut the cost of the, the machine tool outlay purchase price, you've also halved the cycle time of some of your parts, correct? That's correct, yeah. Right, now this machine's an interesting one because I reviewed this machine with Alec. This is obviously the new SR32 J2 Type A. We looked at this, some new features, it's, it's heavier, more tools, faster spindles, etc. Um, but this machine almost wasn't here, was it? Because you were looking for a machine that gave you guide bush and non-guide bush capability, and you didn't think Star offered it, but they do. Is that right? That's correct. When we were in the market to purchase some uh, more machinery, this actually wasn't available. Um, and we were told that this was coming into the UK within months. And if we were willing to hang fire on, on the order, uh, we could perhaps have a look at one of these, and that's how we came to get this machine. Okay, so tell us about the first two machines that you've got, what they are. They're the, the JN, aren't they? What, what, what are they in terms of a spec? Uh, they're a JN machine, so they're a, a non-guide bus machine, and uh, they're fixed at that uh, spec. You can't convert those to a sliding head. And why did you want to be able to make that conversion? What's the, what's the benefit to you? Uh, we have a slider here, which is an ECAS 32T. Um, it's got quite a few years on it now and we were worried of any breakdowns, we, were, we had no sign head facility so the JN with that being uh, switchable, uh, we could convert this over to sliding head whenever we need to. What about the other features on this machine, if you were to take a part off maybe one of your JNs and put it on here in the non-guide bush mode, would it make it faster? Uh, surprisingly it does, it's a heavier machine. Um, and it, it's got a further to travel in some of its movements because it's got a more tool capability. Um, but it's, it's faster in its motion. I think the rapid traverse is at 35 metres a minute as opposed to 25. So is this an indicator as to the speed that Star's development of their technology is moving? Oh, definitely. I would say with this machine, it would appear they've uh, improved every aspect of it. And it also does have more tools, like you say, doesn't it? Is that just on the back working or the front working? Tell us about that. It's on the back working. And what about things like B-axis? I notice here you don't actually have one, do you? No, we don't have B-axis. Um, that was part of our methodology with uh, the fixed head machines. We normally get them fully loaded. Um, and of course, that comes at a cost. Whereas when we looked into the JN, it didn't have all the features perhaps that we wanted on the uh, fixed head. But for simple components, you don't need all those extra features, and that's where the JN, the cost, is really making grounds on efficiency. But on this machine, you don't have a B-axis either, do you? No, no. no. And would you, would you never then make that leap? Do you not think that the day will come where the part will come in with an angled hole and you'll go, I wish I had one? Um, we do have uh, fixed tooling that you can uh, manually set to an angle, and I suppose if we found ourselves constantly doing that, we would look to a programmable B-axis. What about your use here of mineral oils? Tell us about that and why you've selected this instead of, uh, let's say, soluble coolant. Uh, the mineral oil is obviously quite traditional with sliding heads. Um, it's a massive benefit to the machine and the power tooling and lubrication. But also I believe there's something to do with the sulfur with stainless steel as well. It, it helps with the cutting tools 
surface finishes, tool life, it's definitely a big advantage. And do you have much experience yourself on the um, controls that Star supply with the Fanuc systems? Uh, you know, maybe their, their own software that they have in order to make programming easier, but also give you more control over uh, cycle times? Um, we do have a, a lot of experience here on programming. In fact, one of the things we try to do is make standard macro templates so that whenever we create a program, it will run on any machine with no alterations. And Star have helped us with that. Um, so they've been uh, invaluable with their help, Alex. For one more. And HFT, that's um, a new thing for Star as well, high frequency turning. You are cutting a lot of stainless here. We've, we've seen some of your components. Are you going to be introducing that onto your machines? Because surely that would be a massive help, wouldn't it? Um, I think it would be. It's something we're going to look into that in the near future. And for our viewers that don't know, the HFT is about controlling the swarf when you're machining. So you would get a lot of stringy swarf, but now you may be able to chip it using that software. Absolutely, yeah. yeah I think it's transforming engineering, I think. What about remnant and bar and the differences between having the guide bush and the non-guide bush? What's your experience in that area? Uh, typically with a sliding head uh, guide bush mode, you end up with a long bar end. And we, it's significant to us because we deal in exotic materials and stainlesses. So a uh, shorter bar end is, is uh, what we're looking for all the time. Now we can get that down to 80 mil on the JN, which is quite attractive to us. So that would be the same with this then in the non-guide bush mode? That's correct, yes. Final few words, Ian, on Star. We all know that the sliding head market is pretty competitive. There's, there's only really a few players. Uh, for you to have embraced Star's technology and, and grown your business with them, how, how would you summarise that journey? Um, I would say you, when you, anyone can buy a machine and throw it on the shop floor and put a wire in it and then start making parts, but there's obviously more to it than that. Um, the support is uh, paramount in our book and Star have been 100% helpful, not, not just in getting the machine on the shop floor up and running, but they've really helped us to organise the whole shop. It's, uh, it's been incredible what they've done.